Yeah, so if you look at this side, nice and smooth, just a clean arch. <laughs> Jeez, James, come yeah. on, dude. Hell yeah, brother. You're on the Please Me Fawn YouTube channel. Dang it, I pull up and you're, you're already pissing off the neighbors. I've been here for two seconds. Yeah, I, I'm just fitting in, you know? <laughs> All right, everyone, welcome to James' new residence. We got a fresh garage set up fresh here. Garage. Dude, fresh units. Fresh unit, freshly broken in. All black garage. I pull up. Let me just tell you my experience as James being one of his neighbors for a few seconds. He's revving the drift car in the driveway. <laughs> <laughs> There's Can Am trails <laughs> out in the street that I already saw. And, uh, you know, it's just classic James. It's really quick, guys. It just so turned out that James' neighbors are the coolest people ever. For those of you who watch the channel for forever, I used to have a neighbor Ed the neighbor when we worked out of my garage and James neighbor really reminded me of Ed the neighbor super cool guy and his backyard is full of Nova's which is just crazy but James neighbors are awesome so just for record guys this is James neighbor he's got uh 20 some Nova's in his backyard this is just the only reason why I moved here <laughs> big Nova guy Big Nova guy. That's what's part of the neighborhood. New Year's Eve, New Year's night, or whichever time you want to call it. I actually met some more neighbors. The, the guy who does the fiber optics at Bradenton, the timing system. Oh, yeah? He's my neighbor. Oh, there you yeah. go. Met him this weekend. Uh, the and, other thing is, too, Uncle Chet is buying a house just down the road from James. You can see it. I mean, you don't <laughs> want to point it because it'll give it away, but it's I can see his front door from my garage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and if you guys somehow do figure out where James lives, don't be that guy, okay? Yeah. Please, have this guns. guy's crazy. You don't <laughs> don't look up where he lives. Just don't be that my guy. My wife will probably beat me too, but yes, she's uh, <laughs> she'll she'll shoot off some rounds. <laughs> All right, so today we're here to talk about the 240, but also talk about the Nova because now that this yeah, is thanks. as damaged as it is, if you guys remember the Christmas tree race when James and I raced, he sent his car to the moon. <laughs> can't bring it down soft stuff like this happens and it came down hard damn dude yeah. sorry man oh, sorry. we'll get her fixed we'll get her done wait I'll weren't you talking about front halfing it all the way yeah i'll just put this in the nova though come back out two weeks from now Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> well what you didn't see is the aftermath of that which is a bench frame yeah and a lot of other pretty, further damage so we're gonna tore up, show yeah. you the full spiel on that so anyone that knows these japanese cars know they're made out of like soda cans. so if you look at this side nice and smooth just a clean arch <laughs> Jeez, james yeah. come on dude this is bent like a pretzel dude what are you doing out here boy i like any ants pretzel so i try to make my own <laughs> man when it's like Oh man, that's so bad. All right, so Whew. as many of you saw when this had a LS in it, you know, it was mid plate motor plated. But Which, hold on for the record, he went home after the race and immediately removed everything from the car yeah. <laughs> because night, night of it happened, it was fully torn apart. Yep. But, um, you know, it's mid plate motor plate, the strongest way you can mount a motor to a car that's, you know, a race car. Mm -hmm. It's all factory sheet metal and being cheap japanese thin metal it doesn't take getting smashed very well from a wheelie that was probably like almost I mean, 90 degrees to the vertical, sky all four wheels off the ground <laughs> so if you come over to this side what happened when i pulled it all out i realized that the motor did actually hit the ground the oh. rack did hit the ground the frame horns in the car are still true i measured them they're still straight but this upper strut tower took the brunt of it as you can see yeah you can't it is now zigzagged mm -hmm. you look and at it down there this is supposed to be straight and as you can see it does this yep and then you can see just right here yeah. it's piled up and it actually broke metal crimpled metal and then crimpled the firewall pretty heavily like this this is bow that's supposed to be flat and this is not supposed to be over top of that yeah and for the record too when the fender was still on the car 
I mean, James pulled up after, you know, we were both, I was packing my parachute. He pulled up. His entire fender was just crinkled. Yeah, you could see it. Oh, you still have, yeah. You yeah. can see the dent. Like it, it crinkled, oh, yeah. crinkled the <laughs> fender. And, you know, it, like, it ripped the fender clean out of the car. Like it, it bent the metal underneath the fender heavy enough to rip a bolt right through it. Yeah. So, so pretty bad deal. Uh, you know, being that the firewall is bent and everything, I mean, you know, the damage goes deeper than just what we can see. So, yeah. I mean, as I, when I pulled this fender off, even like in here, which is very structural on these cars, it's like a, a crush zone. As you can see, the layers of metal stacked here. Yep. It actually got into this and this, this is bent here. It's bowed a little bit. So, Although it it might not look like a lot, if this was a, a a car that you drove on the road and an insurance company came to do this, they would look at it and say this car is total. Yeah, like it's a total loss. The next step of this is, you know, I just want to point out that James' wife and I are on the same team as this. Might have been a blessing in disguise because the 240, believe it or not, does not have much roll cage. In fact, Donnie the drift car has about the same amount of roll cage. Exactly the same amount. And this car is so freaking fast now, it was in desperate need of a lot of roll cage. So from the sounds of it, you're switching to the Nova now, which Ooh, is a yeah, very safe, a whole lot of roll cage. very uh, safe car. It's not as many bars as the El Camino will have, yeah. but it's like, so the El Camino is 25.2. Mm -hmm. This is a 25.5 car with the funny cars, what the Nova is. So yeah. it's good for uh, 750s at 3,200 pounds in the quarter, but the car doesn't weigh that. And so. it's gonna run the eighth, right? Yeah, it's only okay. the eighth. Car. All right, so 240 basically has to go up to the shop. This is a whole, I mean, we're just dropping all kinds of news in this video. Uh, you guys have seen Ty in the videos a whole bunch. Ty was a full-time fabricator until he started helping us with projects, but that's what he does for a living before he started helping us out. Ty is actually full-time now at the shop. We needed a guy on staff that does fabricating all the time and Ty does an amazing job with it. So Ty's gonna be working full time up at the shop now. It sounds like this is gonna be his first project right off the rip is yeah, putting a full so chassis under it. What the plan's gonna be is the floor of the car from rear subframe. So I gotta obtain factory style suspension. Yeah. So the rear subframe, the IBS kit will still remain a bolt-in subframe in the car. Yep. The front post that the subframe bolts to from there forward in this car is gonna be cut off. The entire floor, the firewall, this entire front end. See you later. Done. And then it'll be all tubed like the El Camino. We'll put the motor back, a motor back in. Yeah, because this motor is going in that. We might be able to save this strut top to keep it factory style suspension. Yep. I'm just going to take this front strut top and weld, weld it, it to the bar. bar. And then it'll be... It's allowed in the rules, you know, yeah, it's a gray be, area. It'll be a class legal car, but all these fast guys out there, that's what they do. So but while, you know, the frame is out of the car, this whole entire cage in here is going to be ripped out. The car will get a full cage, you know, for at least 750s or faster. Yeah, so I, I actually, before Ty started working for us, you know, he's been a good friend of mine for a while. I actually had him come to my house and he did a bunch of tube work in the back of the car when I did the rear end swap. Yep. And I had him look at the cage and you know i was planning to add more to it but he goes the way this top bar is bent to add the front bars you know your pillar yep. bars it'd be right into my helmet so it's like one of those things to get me to fit better in the car the cage had to be cut out anyways wasn't necessarily planned to do it now but it'll be done now the wheelie the wheelie scheduled it for him yeah <laughs> that's the whole reason why my nova went down is it did the same wheelie the same way down yeah right into so the same exact thing that just happened to this car actually happened to this car, what, in 2017 or 2018? Yeah, 17. This thing got aired out all four wheels off the ground, came down, smacked it, bent the front I actually have frame picture, upwards. I have a picture of it landing, and you can see in the picture this gap. This is how this gap's supposed to be. Yeah. In the picture, this gap's like two inches wide. You can see it actually bent the... This, yeah. See how it cracked the bodywork right cracked here? Cracked the window and everything. Yeah, that was from that. But she's almost all the way back together now. Two yeah, front at the front end. Two front at the front like I'm going to do on this car, but because this car already had a cage that is good inserted and everything, I was able to just add to it. So yep. I got rid of all the factory sheet metal like how that car was. Mm -hmm. And I planned on putting a lot of these parts that were on this LS motor that were in the 240, I planned on putting in this car. Yep. But I ended up turboing the 240, so I just kind of was like robbing parts off of Peter to pay Paul kind of deal. Mm -hmm. But now it's all in its rightful home. 
This is where it started. This yeah, is where this it was, was supposed to go. Yeah, this is where it was supposed the to go. The funny thing is, it was in the Nova, and then it was like, no, yeah, Nissan well, 240. Yeah. <laughs> this is the motor that was in the 240, the transmission converter. Everything's going to be the same. Takes the speed 427, yeah, aluminum re sleeve, like Leroy 1.0. Yeah, it's a, it's a ripper. So um, I just got to build the hot side, cold side, uh, mount my fuel cell, and then lay my harness on it and it's pretty much there. yeah super simple project and he's using the manifolds and everything from the yeah. 240 so i mean for yeah, the most everything, part everything's gonna be plug and play from the harness i mean i got it laid over there uh i got a few pieces that i'm waiting on so so i don't have to take too many parts back so this way yep. duplicates everything same so when turbo the time comes yeah this is the same turbo i am going to be upgrading a turbo very soon I'm going to, this is a single 91, I'm going to a single 98. Our buddy Casey Rance with the yeah. orange car, he's got... He's selling you the 98. Yeah, he's oh, got it. so close to that 100 millimeter mark. He's got a killer deal. It's a little bit bigger back <laughs> housing, but it's a GTX based Gen 2 billet all ball player. Because this oh. is just a journal bearing. Hell yeah. Deal, yeah, but so. she's ripped. This thing is so cool. This is a 65? 64. 64 so this Nova. This is a 64 Nova. It's a Chevy 2 post car. So it's got you know, pillars here. An SS would this would all be open, but yeah, it's uh, I've had so my dad bought the car when I was nine and I watched it like race growing up. When I turned 13, I built a small block for it, it was done when I was 14 and put it in the car and started driving this car 14 years ago when I was 14. When I turned 18, I bought the car from my dad and just always, it's always a ball. It yep. used to be back seat, two seats, no funny car cage, you know. Now it's just a full blown we'll race run, car. It was a 10 second quarter mile car on the motor and then we, you know, went eighth mile racing, added some nitrous, it went, you know, sixes, five. Went to the dentist, fours, learned yeah. about nitrous. Yeah, couldn't get away dentist, from it. Couldn't get away from it. And then <laughs> it has just like slowly evolved. List of items stolen from the Nova yeah. to go on the 240. List wheels of, list items going back because circle track wheels on the car <laughs> yeah. just as this wheelie made this car happen this wheelie is now making that car happen so yeah really gotta stay away from those wheelies man yeah well th this thing i mean it's probably going to wheelie eventually but it shouldn't wheelie as easy as this thing got to yeah i mean it the suspension just works so well but it was at the point where we we're like in untested uncharted territories with it to yeah. where the only thing that changed from a tune-up where it go A to B fast was a half a pound of boost on the lead. And, and it, it got so cold that night, too. Oh, and, it, she it, just... and it actually, we were demanding a half pound more on the lead, and it picked up a pound and a half. And it literally <laughs> made the car. I even told Nate, I mean, in his video, you could tell. I was like, dude, it's probably going to wheelie. Like, this air is ridiculous. And yeah. like, oh, I tamed it. I tamed it down. And sure enough. So and I let go of the button and just instantly shot up. The wheelie thing is such a fine line because when you're up there, if you lose all four tires, like James went up so fast, all four tires came off the ground. And at that point, you have no control. She's coming down. Yeah. And that's what got him on both of these cars. So Yeah. What are we dealing with weight wise? Do you think that's going to be a little bit heavier? So this car was crazy light. You know, it's a light car to begin with. I mean, the factory fenders on these things weigh, you know, seven pounds a piece. Yeah. This car looks really heavy but isn't much heavier so this thing will be about 200 pounds heavier all said and done yeah but i have things i can still do like i have a set of fiberglass doors in the corner for it these steel doors are 90 pounds a piece but it is a better chassis but it's a solid chassis so it's it's, it's a proven chassis i mean yep. this thing went would go 111 to the 60 foot with like 600 more horsepower than this thing would go. And this thing would go 118 with, you know, 600 less horsepower to the yeah. 60 foot. So, so now you got the power. Now it's got the power. So this thing will be close to, if not mm -hmm. faster than this thing. And what about this? Weight. When does this get its LS swap? Dude, I found a box. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I don't know whether to be excited or not excited. Dude. Oh, it doesn't even say it. This is a Can-Am X3 nitrous yeah, kit that uh, Holly sent us. Oh, it probably sits right here. Yeah. And, uh, UTV Can-Am X3 wet nitrous kit that uh, Holly sent us when I got mine. We never put the nitrous on it because we did the, the mods to it, but uh, like the exhaust and yeah. tune and all that. But you never know. It might start wheeling too with some nitrous. James is going to be wheeling and everything. Since this is now your favorite car, I went ahead and got you something for your wall. Ooh. They take, a, they take a picture of the car and That's then they... Sick. Turn it into a cartoon. Damn. And then print it. Wow, thanks, pal. It's now Fair my good. favorite car. Is that how you see it? <laughs> Dude, this guy. Unbelievable. I was actually thinking the other day, 
it's not going to be long until Ruby's going to need a driver because I'm going to be full El Camino. El Camino. Full time El Camino. Back. Dude. I get my rental ride. Yeah, you get your rental ride back. <laughs> but this thing's going to be. This thing in the El Camino. Yeah. Man, if the Elko is a, we might just have to change the gear in the Elko it's, and run a couple eighth mile so races. I was, I was talking, I'm probably, the car's been black forever and it, it'll kind of like hurt to not see it black, but I was thinking about wrapping it the same color as the Elko, like a close Oh, color that'd be that. fresh. We had matching cars. And then cars. Do, the, do all the, I, I'm a big chrome guy on old cars, so I'm going to keep the chrome, but maybe do it black mm -hmm. over that gray. Dude, it'd be, especially it'd look roll up in a new toter home both on building specialties both yes. same color both black options sick dude so turbo, single turbo you know yeah i know cool. i'm gonna have a little more turbo but the el camino i just talked to kevin uh we're gonna be going up there this week i gotta give him the hood the grill some other uh components that we still have sitting at the shop but the motor is in turbos are going in right now by the end of the month we should be racing the el camino that is the plan so yeah it's gonna be geared for the quarter mile, so this thing will probably spank it in the eighth, but they yeah. might equal out by the this time they get to the This car does quarter. have a little less gear in it than the 240 does, so it might be might heavier in being, it has a little less gear in it, it might be able to make the quarter dyno. Oh, we got a hub dyno. So, That'll be a great video too, because yeah, she'll we put down some power. Put, so when I hub dyno the 240, we never went past 15 pounds and it made 1,320 horsepower. Yeah, we just insane. did that to get an iron for FL2K. Now that we had the tune-up established, you know, we were going to put it back on the hub dyno and just see what it make on 26, yeah. 27 pounds of boost. But dude, can we please get a oil pan? I got one. Okay, my dad got one for Christmas. Sweet. Oh my god, Moroso drag race pan. What do you think it'll make now, though? Um, it's probably. I mean, what it was running at the weight it was, it was making 1,600 horsepower, if not a hair more. <laughs> To go as fast as I mean, it's going 162 miles yeah. an hour in the eighth. That's that's all in the mail. So we'll yeah. throw it on the hub dyno. Throw it on the hub dyno. It'll, I I am expecting to see 1500 if it makes more than that. Yeah, I'm going to be pretty pretty. pretty if we see 1500, safe. then take it to the track. Oh yeah, yeah Sweet. for sure. So all right, cool. All right, well, soon to see the Nova out. RP 240 for now. Now, Ty's yeah. gonna get her fixed up up at the shop, so you guys will see a bunch of stuff on that, and you'll see. I'll definitely make it over here for the first startup of the Nova. We'll get that all filmed for you guys because we're just gonna try and. Uh, now that James lives five minutes yeah. from me, it's a lot different than when he used to live an hour and a half. So we'll get uh, we'll get the full videos of these things firing up and the whole nine yards. And keep you guys up to date on the Nova. That's it. A little update in James' garage today. Thanks for watching, New for Dale. We'll freaking see you later.